saints. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn your Bible to, to 1 Corinthians 13. And uh, we're just going to speak about this a little bit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, saints. Praise God, man. Father God, I just praise you and worship you tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. We bless you tonight for the unity of the body, for the unity of the saints. And we come together before you, Lord, to glorify your name, glorify your word, glorify your truth. We praise you right now, Father. We ask that you apply this word to our hearts, Lord, that we learn something fresh and new from the rhema that is contained therein, Lord, that we learn from you, that we grow in you, that you would grow in us, Father, that we would decrease and you would increase, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. That you, Lord, would break and crush and demolish every demonic force that tries to utilize our flesh for its bidding, that you would crush it, Lord, tonight. That you would crush it tonight. That you would teach us, Lord, to walk by the Spirit and not by the flesh. Because if we walk by your Spirit, we're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Hallelujah. Teach us how to be violent. Hallelujah. Teach us how to be violent, O oh God, against the flesh. For the kingdom of heaven within us suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. Now, in, in chapter 12, Paul said, Yet show I unto you, the last verse, a more excellent way. Okay. Paul said, I'm showing you a more excellent way, Corinthians. He's speaking to a people who are walking in the carnal mind. They're saying, they're saints. He called them saints in chapter 1. But they are operating by the flesh. They are operating by their own thinking, their own knowing, their intellectual mind. Okay? Though I speak with the tongues, he says, I'll show you a more excellent way. Here it is. Here's the more excellent way. Okay? But it ain't like the world says it is. See, we got to get the world thinking out of our mind. It's like God says it is. And we have example after example after example in the written word. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity. That's agape, saints. Charity. I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Sounding brass is just ding. It's just, it's just like a, a noise that it's not like an instrument except for a, a cymbal sound. Ding. You know, and that's how it sounds. Or a tinkling cymbal, like a ding, ding, ding. Okay? It's just one continual ding, 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 ding. Okay, if I don't have charity, if I don't have agape love, and that sacrificial love that the Father had, the Father so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in it should not perish but have everlasting life. Do we have that kind of love in us tonight? Are we walking in that charity tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity. I am nothing. I am nothing. Jesus said in John 6, it's recorded, except ye eat the flesh. He said, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Now the Catholic Church would teach you that that is the literal flesh and blood of Jesus, but that's a lie, okay? What it means is in John 6, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. It means sacrifice. It means laying down your life like the Son of God did. Hallelujah. That's what it means. See? And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, and had not charity, I am nothing. I am nothing. 
You got to have that charity. You got to have that sacrificial spirit, that spirit of humility that Christ possessed. All of us have to have it and walk by it. Verse 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, I don't have that charity, I don't have that charity, that agape love that Abraham had, the agape that he possessed from God, God put it in him. See, Abraham, he loved Isaac. I mean, he loved Ishmael, okay? He loved his wife, all right? He loved God, okay? But when Isaac was born, oh, man, that was number one to Abraham. I mean, it, was, it really was number one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah was number one, praise God. And, you know, the Lord came to him one day and said, Abram, Abraham, he said, yes, Lord. He said, I want you to take Isaac, your son, whom you love. And I want you to take him over to a mountain that I will show you. Mount Moriah. And I want you to offer him there as a burnt sacrifice unto me. And at that moment, Abraham knew what the Lord was doing, he, he, he knew the Lord is testing me here. And Abraham, he, he right at that moment, there was a battle that took place in Abraham. And Abraham chose God over his own son. Hallelujah. He chose the father over his own son. Now, the Lord's giving me a revelation right now, okay? Hallelujah. Not only does Abraham represent the father in the story, but he also represents the son because he loved the father. Hallelujah. Like Jesus loved the father. Hallelujah. And he sacrificed his own life, the life that was in his own son. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Do you see that today? Can you see that today? Abraham. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to your holy name. I mean, Abraham is representative of the Father in the story. Genesis 22. And now Abraham, he is also representative of the Son, the Lord Jesus. Not only is Isaac representative of the Son, but so is Abraham. Because Abraham is sacrificing his own life which is his son, hallelujah, because he loved his son so much. And at that moment, Isaac was dead in Abraham. And so he took Isaac up to the mount. And we know the story when Abraham pulled the knife to slay his son, the Lord, hallelujah, glory to God, said, Abraham, Abraham, touch not the lad, hallelujah, glory to God. And he received Isaac back in resurrection. Oh, praise God. So you see, you can do all this stuff. Bro, you can do all this stuff. There are many people out there today. They're doing this stuff. Oh, they're casting out devils. Oh, they're prophesying. Oh, they can, they, they're like fortune tellers. They're like sorcerers. Reading people's mail. Prophesying to them. And some of them even get paid to do it. But they have no charity. They don't have no sacrificial love. They don't empty themselves more for God and for God's purposes. They do it and they put their name on a marquee. And they make their, their something big. They, they, they want to be something big and something known by man. Hallelujah. Paul said, if you don't have charity, Paul, Paul said this. The apostle Paul, who bore the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ in his own body. He said, I am nothing if I have not charity. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profit me nothing. Nothing. Hallelujah. See, you can give it all. Yeah, you can give your whole life, but if you don't have love, the sacrificial love of Yahweh, Almighty God living with inside of you, Jehovah, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost, and the Father, and the blood of Jesus, 
You have nothing. You have nothing. Hallelujah. You're just a benefactor. That's all you are. Praise God. Verse 4, charity suffereth long and is kind. Oh, praise God. Charity suffereth long. See, see, charity, the agape of God, the love of God suffereth long. It's long suffering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's beautiful and is kind. Hallelujah. Charity envieth not. It doesn't envy other people. It's not jealous. Charity vomit not itself, doesn't lift itself up, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked. Are you easily provoked today? Thinketh no evil. In other words, thinketh no evil there. I think that goes back to Psalm 69. Uh, I need to turn over there in my Bible. Let me, let me open my Bible here. And I think this is what the Holy Spirit's speaking about. It's Psalm 69 or 68, somewhere around there. Let's see if I can find it real fast. Oh, hallelujah. Our Father's, He's worthy, He's holy, He's just, He's right. Oh, praise God. It's, it's Psalm 64, verse 6. They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. The heart is deep, see? Hallelujah. You know, it's not easily provoked. Charity's not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. It's, it's not trying to find out evil about people. It doesn't have to. Jesus didn't have to go into a city and try to search for the evil. You know what I mean? The evil came out to find him. The evil, it was dark. And the light in Jesus dispelled the darkness. Hallelujah. And that's how it's supposed to be with us. When we walk into a room or we go into the store... Hallelujah. See, this is how our life is supposed to be. Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so send I you. And that's how we're supposed to be. And if it's not happening in our life, we need to say, Lord, do some work in me. Lord, take your knife to me. Lord, take your sword to me. So that I will be the, the saint you want me to be, Lord, the representative of Christ that you want me to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It doesn't think no evil. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Read Psalm 60, 64 if you get a chance. Hallelujah. It's really good. And I know you have a chance. You can put that video game aside or put that uh, baseball game on hold or whatever, you know, and go read Psalm 64. Okay? Probably take you all of five minutes. Praise God. It rejoiceth not in iniquity. Charity. Pure charity. But rejoiceth in the truth. Hallelujah. Now, charity is, is a beautiful name. Charity is a beautiful word. It's agape. It's love. True love. See? And love and truth go together. If you read 2 John, truth is mentioned five times and love is mentioned six times. They go together. See? Hallelujah. Six or eight times. Something like that. Let me go back there. I'll see. I wrote it down. Praise God. Make sure. I want to tell you. I don't want to tell you something that's not true. So I like to tell you the truth here. Hallelujah. The second letter of John. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Truth is uh, one, two, three, four, five. Hallelujah. And I think love is like four or five times. But they're joined together. Truth and love. You can't separate truth and love. Hallelujah. The true truth and the true love. Agape love. Hallelujah. Charity believeth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. See, that's the that's the charity, that's God. That, that, is, that is God. 1 John 4 8 says, God is love. God is charity. See? And, and that's this love here in 1 Corinthians 13. This is the gift. This is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Paul was talking in chapter 12 about the gifts of the Spirit. He says, yet yeah, show I unto you a more excellent way. Hallelujah. Then this is a gift of God. Look, we only love God because he first loved us. It's not something we decided to do. Oh, I think I'm going to love God today. No, you're not. You're not going to love God until God 
First child is his love on you. See? And reveals his son in you. That's what we need more of. We need more of the revelation of the Son of God in us. Not just in our minds. Not just in our in our understanding of our, our minds. But we need it in our life and experience. See? And we have to cry out for that. And so God will bring that to us. So that we will be strong and valiant. That we will be that battle axe in this hour. See? That we will be that sanctified one that God talks about in Isaiah 13. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And look at verse 8. Charity never fail it. Never fail it. See, God never fails. God never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Yeah. It doesn't mean that it's going to be a false prophecy. It means that it's going to be stopped prophesying. See? Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Now, I'm going to spend a little time right there on verse 9. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Now, people love to take that and say, we don't know everything. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, that we, God's people, have an unction from the Holy One, and we know all things. Now, that's what the Scripture says. And I know many of you, you might be hearing this, you don't believe the Scripture, so it doesn't apply to you, okay? But it applies to me, and it applies to my wife, and it applies to many saints who do believe the Scriptures. We have an unction from the Holy One, and we know all things. So what's Paul talking about here? It looks like a contradiction, for we know it in part. Paul's saying, we know this part, and we know this part, and we know this part. Okay? Those three parts, okay? But maybe there's a thousand parts that we know. Maybe there's ten thousand parts that we know. But those parts, we know those parts. And we know them fully. But we don't know all the parts. That's what he's talking about. See? We know it in part. We only know a little bit about the mystery. Hallelujah. We can only see a little bit. The river is deep and six miles wide, saints, according to the measure of the angel in Ezekiel 47. It's a deep river. And none of us will ever know everything there is to know about the Lord. Hallelujah. For all of eternity. See? But the part that we know, that part in experience that we have learned, we know it. And we can remember we can draw upon that. We can say, yes, Lord, I remember. Lord, even though today I'm going through this trial, I remember you brought me through that same trial two years ago, Lord. And you'll bring me through it again, see. Hallelujah. See, praise God. Hallelujah. And we prophesy a part. That means, you know, we give the prophecy. We give foretell the truth that God gives us, see. But who knows all the truth? What man on this earth knows all the truth there is to speak? The Bible says in the Gospel of John that if everything was written that Christ did, the whole world couldn't contain the books that should be written. Hallelujah. That's how much there is to know. Oh, praise God. You see, that, that's what Paul's talking about there. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Oh, praise God. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Many of you today, you're grown in the faith. You've been a Christian five, six, ten years, 15, 20 years, but you're still like you're a little two-year-old Christian. And God says, come on up to your age. God says, repent and come on up to your age. Get into my word. God says, repent and study the word. Show yourself approved unto God. I work and write and divide in the word of truth. I mean, I know some believers. We know some believers that are 10-year-old believers. Okay? 12-year-old believers. And we know some believers that are 2- and 3-year-old believers. And 1-year-old believers. And some of the 2- and 1- and, and 3-year-old believers are further advanced in the spirit, than those who've been walking with the Lord 10 years. And it's because of pride. It's because of, of, of their, 
their inability of commitment and surrender unto God to take them fully all the way. That's what makes you a saint. That's pleasing to God. When you surrender your life to God fully. Hallelujah. Think about it. Praise God. For now we see through a glass darkly, Paul says. Oh, praise God. But then face to face, and now I know in part. But then shall I know, even as also I am known. Oh, praise God. See, hallelujah. I'm going to know, even as I am known. Oh, praise God. I know some of this I just can't get into explaining it. Hallelujah. And now by the faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. So where are we at today, Lord? Show us, Lord. Where are we at, Lord? Show us where we are on the walk today, Father. Keep us on the straight and narrow. Show us the adjustments we must make, Lord. Show us where you want to put the chisel, Lord. Help us to bear our hearts to you today. That you would take your chisel to us, Lord. That you would work in us. That you would have your way with us. Break all religion off of us, Lord. We don't want to walk in religion. We want to walk in life. Like the angel said, go and speak to the people in the temple. All the words of this life. Not this religion. This life. And let us be obedient to that call, Lord. Let us preach all the words of this life. And I know what you say to me, Lord. You say, okay, John. But I got to work the life in you. Hallelujah. And I say, okay, Lord. Is it going to hurt? He says, not much. The more you kick, the more it hurts. I say, oh, God, have mercy. Oh, God, have mercy. We try to be like much afraid and say, bind our hands and our feet, Lord. Sometimes he does, you know. Sometimes God will do that. He'll bind your hands and feet. It's like you can't do anywhere. You can't go anywhere. You can't do anything. Because he's working. One time the Lord showed me we felt such a pressure such a pressure, just, I mean, like an oppression. We just couldn't even move. And, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, I've carved you in the palms of my hands. And he said, in time, from time to time, you'll feel that pressure. That's me. I'm closing my hands upon you to protect you. I'm creating a circumstance in your life to keep you and to protect you. And we say, oh, God, thank you, Jesus. And other times it is the oppression of the enemy. So you have to have discernment. You've got to get it from the Lord. You got to pray and seek God, saints. We all got to commit ourselves to seeking him more so that we can walk in charity, so that we can walk as Jesus walked. Let us pray. Father, we pray right now. We thank you, Lord, for this word tonight. We thank you, Lord, for your way, for your truth, for your life. Oh, God, we bless and praise your holy name. Oh, God, I pray that you would just continue, Lord, to pour forth your mighty spirit upon all flesh. Oh, God, that you would do it, Lord, like you said in the book of Joel, Lord, in the book of Acts chapter 2. Lord, that prophecy is fulfilled, is being fulfilled even right now. Pour forth your spirit, O oh God, upon all flesh. Have your way, O oh God, with the inhabitants of the earth, O oh God. You do your mighty work, O oh Lord. You take your sword, Lord. You wield it where you want to wield it, O oh God. You do your work tonight. We surrender to you here in this house, Lord. We surrender, O oh God, tonight. We surrender as your people. Help us to surrender more. Teach us more what surrender. I say that, Lord, it scares the daylights out of me, God. Because I know I'm still learning about surrender. And help me, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord, not to shrink back, but to go forward in you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. And help these saints here tonight. Listen, oh God, bless them. Keep them. And make your face shine upon them, oh God. Lift up your holy countenance upon them all. And grant them peace, oh God. I pray for my beloved wife, Father. I pray you touch her in a mighty way as well. Father, oh God, I thank you for her. And I pray you bless her extra special. In Jesus' name, amen.